We all love monks almost as much as we love Eddie, but these holy men work in mysterious ways, and there's a wide variety of questions people commonly ask about them. How long does it take to convert a unit? Is it possible to get an instant conversion? What happens if a monk switches targets? And does a group of monks convert more quickly than does a single monk? Knowledge of the arcane art of monk conversions is critical to leading the Wulalu warriors to victory. In this video, we'll cover the details of monk conversions, then look at some examples to see how to use this information to micro monks in our own games. So sit back, say a prayer to our Lord Doubt, and follow me on a journey to learn the truth behind the Wulalu. El Cid, if you should wish to leave a holy man here at the mosque, we will teach him all that we know. First up, we'll look at the conversion task in the monk data. Tasks are the actions that units can perform when you select them and right-click on another unit. There are two fields we'll look at here, work values 1 and 2. These values give the minimum and maximum lengths of time during which a conversion is allowed to occur. When we tell a monk to convert, he'll start chanting away, and approximately every second, there's a chance that the conversion will occur. But before the minimum time of 4 seconds, no conversion can occur, and after 10 seconds, a conversion is guaranteed to occur. That means there's no instant conversions, and there's a limit to how long the monk needs to chant before the conversion has to finish. Now, I said approximately every second, because the time intervals where monks get conversions aren't actually measured in seconds, but rather use a slightly longer unit known in the literature as a monk second. These intervals last approximately 1.2 to 1.4 in-game seconds, with some slight variation. At the end of each of these monk seconds, there's a chance that the conversion finishes. So what's the probability that a conversion succeeds? Well, it's determined by the monk's accuracy. The monk has an accuracy of 25%, so at the end of each monk second, there's a 25% chance that a conversion occurs. Or, at least, that's how things are supposed to work. But there's a slight problem with this 25%. When people have looked into monk conversions in the past, they conducted experiments that came up with slightly higher probabilities, and no one has been able to explain this so far. Whether it's the original monk investigations from the Age of Kings, Giant Apple's follow-up article years later, or even Spirit of the Laws testing, all of them came up with probabilities a bit greater than 25%. Could this difference just be an unlikely coincidence? Or is there something else going on behind the scenes, making monks more likely to convert? I needed to test this out, so I started by looking at how things were tested before. This test methodology involves pausing the game immediately at the start, tasking monks to get them to convert, and then queuing a villager at the town center. The completion percentage of the villager is a more precise timer than the in-game clock. But this test still requires manually clicking on monks and constantly pausing to determine when units are converted, instead of doing perhaps a few dozen conversions. I wanted more. So there's a great Python library for parsing and modifying scenario files. I used it to create 1,000 monks, 1,000 militia, and a trigger with 1,000 task object effects to have the monks convert the militia. Then I went even larger, with 5,000 monks. And then I went larger still, and filled a tiny map with 7,200 monks. If you ever wanted to see AOE2 slow to a crawl, here you go. I repeated the 1,000 monk test 10 times, did a single test with 5,000 monks, and then another test with 7,200 monks, and, armed with a sample of 22,200 conversions, asked the Capture Age team to analyze the recorded games. We found the conversion probability was about 26.6%. At this point, I felt rather confident that the actual probability is higher than 25%, so I went looking for an explanation. I asked around with people who've done some extensive modding and looked at the monk conversion logic, and I finally arrived at an answer. Let's start writing some pseudocode to explain how conversions work, and we'll update this code as we go along. First, at the end of every monk second, a random number from 0 through 100 is generated. This number is tested against a threshold given by the monk's accuracy. If the random number is less than or equal to the threshold, then the conversion succeeds. Otherwise, the monk continues converting. Here, the rand function generates numbers from 0 through rand max, where rand max equals 32,767. Next, the number is scaled to fit in the narrower range from 0 to 100. 
This scaling is performed by first multiplying by 100, and then integer dividing by rand max. But there's a slight problem here. All numbers from 0 to 99 are roughly uniformly distributed, but 100 only occurs once out of 32,767 times. That doesn't really affect anything, though, since we essentially have a uniform distribution of the 100 numbers from 0 through 99. Now, since there is a non-strict inequality in checking the random number is less than or equal to the threshold, there are 26 values for which this check succeeds. Hence, as the check is less than or equals instead of just less than, the monk conversion probability will always be approximately one point higher than the monk's accuracy value. The 25 accuracy thus yields a probability of approximately 26%. Now, that's not quite the 26.6% we saw in our trials, so it's possible the true conversion probability actually is just a bit higher than 26%, or we might not have used a large enough sample size to get close enough to the actual value. Perhaps there's some quirks involving the implementation of the rand function, or something else going on elsewhere in the game's code that affects this value. I'm going to use the 26% as the value for conversion probabilities throughout the rest of this video, but be aware that that is just an estimate, and the conversions may actually be slightly more likely to occur based on the testing we've done. Now that we've gotten that figured out, we also need to account for the minimum and maximum conversion times. If fewer than 4 monk seconds have elapsed, the threshold is set to negative 1000. The random number is always non-negative, so it never is less than or equal to the negative threshold, and the conversion always fails. If 10 or more monk seconds have elapsed, then the threshold is set to 1000, causing the conversion to succeed. And indeed, from what we've seen so far, the random numbers from 0 through 100 always satisfy the threshold. The result is that we have what's called a geometric distribution, but with the conversion guaranteed at 10 monk seconds. And the average time of a conversion is approximately 6.4 monk seconds, or roughly 8 in game seconds. This probabilistic mechanic can lead to a good deal of confusion among players, as there is a 26% chance that a conversion occurs as soon as possible after the fourth monk second. Four monk seconds at the normal 1.7x game speed translates to about three IRL seconds, which can lead to frustrations about instant conversions or broken monks from players who get unlucky and have their knights converted very quickly. Okay, it's great that we know all of this, but how does it help us in a game? Our first micro tip is that the number of monk seconds that have elapsed for a conversion doesn't reset if the monk switches targets. If we start converting a unit, and the enemy tries to run that unit away, the monk's conversion timer does not reset until the unit completely leaves our line of sight and the monk stops chasing it. If the unit stops running and the monk catches up, it can continue converting without needing to wait again for the 4 second minimum. But even further, we can switch targets and start converting another unit, and keep the progress we've made towards the 4 and 10 monk second thresholds. If we see a unit running away, we simply can switch to another target without resetting the timer. One specific example of this trick is when fighting crossbowmen. The 9 base range of monks allows them to outrange most other units, so the player controlling the crossbows should take one or two units and periodically move them backwards, trying to get the monks to follow and walk forward into the firing range of their other units. The monk player then wants to notice any monks who start moving forward and retask them upon the closer units so they aren't pulled towards the enemy. And further, we can select a group of monks and right-click on a single enemy unit. Then, we control-click a monk portrait to deselect a monk and right-click on another target. The monks spend monk seconds converting the first enemy unit, meaning they've gotten closer to passing the minimum threshold, but we only want to do this with small groups of monks until we get the Theocracy technology, as all of the monks lose their faith if any one of them successfully gets a conversion. We need to be careful with this trick, but it still can be extremely useful. And finally, if a monk is in danger of being killed and we need to run him away, we will reset his conversion timer. Monks cannot sidestep micro like they were crossbowmen. Their timer would reset with every movement, and they would never succeed in getting a conversion. So those are the basics, but we're not done discussing the conversion mechanics yet, oh no. Next, we need to discuss conversion resistance. We all know that scouts and eagle warriors are more resistant to conversion than normal units, so how does that work? And what about the Teuton's Team Bonus and Faith technologies? They provide conversion resistance, but the tooltips aren't too keen on the specifics. The base conversion resistance for all units is controlled by a specific player resource. We all know that players have food, wood, stone, and gold, 
but they also have several hundred other resources. These resources represent player attributes that can change throughout the game. We're interested in resource 77, Conversion Resistance, which has a default value of 0. This controls the base conversion resistance for all units. There are a few hard-coded special cases where buildings have an additional 3 conversion resistance, and the scout and eagle lines have an additional 8 conversion resistance. The Teuton bonus provides an additional plus 2 conversion resistance, and the faith technology provides an additional plus 3. So, the most resistance a unit can have in a standard game is a scout with faith and a Teuton ally for a total of 13. Then how is this resistance used in calculating the conversion probability? Let's add it to our pseudocode. If the target being converted has a conversion resistance greater than 0, the random number that is generated is multiplied by this resistance. Hence, convert random is increased and is less likely to satisfy the conversion threshold, making the conversion less likely. That roughly means that the conversion probability is divided by the conversion resistance. We often want to fight monks with scouts in the castle age, so let's recalculate our probabilities for scouts. We multiply convert random by 8, and it needs to be less than or equal to the convert threshold of 25 for a conversion to succeed. That means the initial random number must be 0, 1, 2, or 3, giving us roughly a 4% conversion probability. Comparing the new distribution to our original distribution, the most striking difference is that the maximum of 10 monk seconds is the most likely time at which a scout is converted, with a probability of approximately 78%. The average conversion time of a scout increases by almost 3 monk seconds. Let's further work out how Teuton units, and units of their allies, fare against monks compared to our previous calculation for the standard case. Using the same technique, we find that generic Teuton units are, again, most likely to be converted by reaching the maximum time, but the effect isn't nearly as great as it is for scouts. Teutonic units have an average conversion time of roughly 7.8 monk seconds, and Teuton scouts are extra resistant with an 83% chance that they don't switch sides until the 10th monk second elapses. Just remember, there's still a 3% chance that the scout is converted as fast as possible after the 4th monk second, so a monk can still get very lucky and save himself from a Teutonic scout with an early conversion, it just won't happen very often. But there's one caveat here. If we get past the maximum conversion time, Ensemble just picked 1000 as some arbitrarily large number that they must have thought never would be exceeded. Well, with a high enough conversion resistance, we can exceed it. If we have a scout with faith, then we have a laughably high 11 conversion resistance. That means if the random number we generate is greater than or equal to 91, then after multiplying it by the 11 resistance, it will be larger than the threshold. After the maximum time, a scout with faith has only a 91% chance of being converted each monk second, a far cry from the guarantee we had previously at the maximum time. Add in a Teuton ally, and the conversion resistance of 13 drops the probability to about 77% per monk second. A monk could still get lucky and finish the conversion immediately after the minimum time, or he could get extremely unlucky and continue to roll unsuccessful conversions. Sometimes, things with probability 1 don't happen, and there's no bound to how long the scout could go on resisting the conversion. An unlucky monk might end up converting forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Moving on, adjusting the conversion resistance isn't the only change made by the faith technology. There are two other player resources that it modifies, the minimum and maximum conversion resistance adjustments. Let's add these two to our pseudocode. These increase the number of monk seconds required to begin converting a unit, and the number of monk seconds where a maximum conversion is supposed to occur. In total, Faith multiplies the conversion probability per second by approximately one-third, makes it take longer for conversions to start and to be guaranteed, and even allows scouts to resist maximum conversions. The tooltip that claims Faith makes conversions 50% more difficult is incredibly wrong. It really undersells just how much power Faith really has to affect conversions. The other technology that affects conversion timing is, expectedly, the Spanish unique technology Inquisition. It subtracts one from two more player resources, conversion min adjust and conversion max adjust. These values are added to their respective number of monk seconds in the conversion. Subtracting one makes them negative and decreases the min and max conversion time by one second. This change has the effect of sliding our geometric distributions left by one monk second and decreasing the average conversion time by a corresponding one monk second. 
The final piece of the conversion puzzle is buildings. As I mentioned before, these have a hard-coded conversion resistance of plus 3, but their conversions don't use the stats from the monk's accuracy and work values. Instead, there are player resources specifically for buildings that control their min and max conversion times and their conversion chance. Interestingly, since the minimum building convert time is greater than the maximum unit convert time, we can charge up conversions by having our monks convert buildings. Then, if they have converted for at least 10 monk seconds, we can retarget the monks onto a unit to get an instant conversion. Even against scouts and eagles, as long as they don't have faith to resist max conversions, the conversion will occur immediately once the next monk second ends. If you ever wanted to frustrate an opponent by using instant conversions, this is the way to do it. As a defender, be sure not to charge headlong into monks who are converting buildings and are prepared to switch their targets. And finally, we come to group conversions. The game doesn't do anything special when a group of monks converts a target, but rather treats each monk individually. Given M monks, the probability that at least one of them gets a conversion is 1 minus the probability that none of them gets a conversion. So, with the standard 0 conversion resistance, at the end of each monk second, the probability of a conversion is 1 minus the quantity 1 minus 0 0.26 raised to the nth power. The more monks we have, the higher the probability of an early conversion. With 10 monks, we have a probability of about 95% that the conversion occurs immediately after the fourth monk second. This situation is where the theocracy technology becomes extremely powerful. Before researching it, if a group of monks converts a single unit, then all of them lose their faith and need to regenerate it before they can convert again. But with theocracy, only one monk from the clergy loses his faith. That means we can use all of our monks to convert a valuable unit, such as a bombard cannon, and then still use the monks afterwards to defend themselves. So there you go, more than you ever wanted to know about monk conversions. Thank you all very much for watching, and extra thanks to everyone who is supporting me on Patreon. Hopefully this resolves all of the mysteries we've had about conversions. Now go out there, use your newfound knowledge, and make Eddie proud.